again this dynamic nag in my case doesn't work because if I want to ping let's say I go to this PC and if I want to ping the same thing you see that here again I cannot ping it because when your router uh, let's go to GNS3 when this PC sends a packet here the translation will be done here and the packet goes out to this ISP and the ISP will forward the packet to this uh, server for example on the net or PC or whatever router when this uh, person here uh, PC inter uh, server or whatever sends wants to send back the reply the reply packet it doesn't know where that address that I have assigned is that's why you have to configure the, a routing table, a routing protocol, uh, sorry, routing, not routing, routing protocol to build up a routing table on this ISP router. And in this case, of course, on this internet as well. Uh, for example, you have a pool here on this uh, perimeter router. So here I have to configure a static route and tell that a static route, any packet that you receive that refers to the addresses that I have in my pools. Uh, what did I have in my pool? The addresses that we had in the pool here. For example, if you receive the packet, that that packet is signed for any of these addresses, then send that packet to this route. Of course, your ISP knows about that address 64.100.10.1, but the ISP doesn't know about the other address, meaning 220.100.10.1.2.3 that you have in your pool. So I have to configure a static route here and tell this uh, router that if you receive the packet for those addresses, send them to this address. Then this router knows how to handle the packet. But again, in this case, it doesn't work because I have to configure the same uh, routing protocol here meaning I have to advertise those uh, routes to this protocol, to this router as well. If I had a PC here, it would work. But anyway, so that's how it works. Uh, let's go for the uh, NAT with overloading. In NAT with our overloading, you will see that everything works. I can ping every, everyone else because my router will translate and the address will be just one address. In the case of static and in case of uh, dynamic, that we had to configure a pool and we had to use other addresses then we had to configure a routing table a routing protocol for the routers to know these addresses but for dynamic NAT with overloading we don't have to do these things so let me remove all those NAT that I configured here dynamic NAT, uh, NAT. so I pause my video I remove all those NAT then I come back and we continue with NAT with overloading Okay, I, I removed all the NATs that I configured here to show that to you. I'm going to type do show. Uh, so let's see. Okay. I'm going to type do show run in filter include uh, NAT. So here is the result no NAT here so we're gonna configure dynamic NAT uh, sorry configure NAT with overloading or NAT with PAT uh, on perimeter router so again you have to follow the same thing meaning you have to find out what is the outside interface in this case was serial 0 slash 0 you have to find out what is the inside interface in this case uh, it's fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 so we do that we go to interface serial 0 slash 0 we type IP net outside this is the outside interface then we go to interface fast Ethernet 0 slash 0 we type IP net inside now I have to configure uh, the interfaces that participate in net next you have to configure an access list exactly the same as uh, dynamic net and there you have to say who is allowed to get access to the internet or who is allowed to use NAT. So again, I'm going to configure a standard access list. Access list, for example, access exit. 
access list let's say 30 and we're gonna permit anyone so in this access list I permit anyone to use this NAT then I have to configure NAT and I have to refer that NAT to use this access list with NAT with overloading you again can create a pool of addresses or you can just use one address that you have and you assign it to this interface meaning you overload the IP address of this interface or if you're rich your company is rich and you bought so many addresses you can use a pool and uh, overload those pool of addresses those uh, addresses in the pool that you have so that uh, there will be less overload on any addresses but in this case I'm going to use the address that I have here on this interface and I'm going to overload this address so perimeter router I type IP net again inside and sor source and I'm going to use list again so I'm telling uh, my router that use IP net for my inside uh, addresses and translate the source addresses according to this list which is 30 and then use you can say use interface or pool in this case I'm gonna say use use interface which interface has a public address this serial interface right so serial 0 slash 0 and then I say overload this uh, address of this serial and then enter so now what will happen any packet that comes here this router will change the source address of that packet to the source address of this to the address of this interface and send it out and then when the response comes back response comes back the reply of the packet comes back it goes to the address of this interface and then the router looks at the NAT table that it has and changes the address to the source address of uh, this computer to the address of this computer and I uh, mean destination address will be this computer and it goes to this one so now I with this NAT that I configured I should be able to ping uh, this router here from this PC so let's do it let's ping 200.100.100.10.2 and sure enough you see that now I can ping so although I have an access list here on this ISP that blocks 192.168.1.0 but since the address changes here to the address of this interface this ISP checks the, uh, the access list of the ISP checks the address it sees that the source address is 64.100.10.1 so according to the access list it shouldn't block that address so the address goes out and the internet responds to that address and it comes to the router and then at this point the router looks at its routing uh, looks at the NAT table and according to the NAT table changes the address to the uh, address of that computer that has requested for the access so that's how you configure static, uh, dynamic, and uh, NAT uh, overloading or uh, overloading NAT or NAT with PAT. Uh, so we have configured our uh, scenario. If you want to configure this exact scenario, you might have a lab at home, uh, meaning uh, you you can have two routers. You can buy two uh, cheap routers from eBay, or um, uh, these servers and configure everything if you have access to a lab and you can buy everything if you have packet tracer uh, you can configure everything in packet tracer uh, you can bring in all these computers the server switches and everything and you configure it there packet tracer is another uh, 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 simulator that uh, you can build up your uh, uh, NAT, uh, sorry uh, your network in that and uh, work uh, on that uh, that needs uh, less resources compared to uh, GNS3, meaning it uh, eats up less resources of the system compared to GNS3.
So we are done with the concept of net. In this video, we learn uh, what is network address translation. We learn that network address translation allows an organization with private IP address to get access to the internet by translating the private addresses to the public addresses. We learn that there are different types of NAT such as static, dynamic, and overloading NAT or NAT with PAT port address translation that uh, uses ports to overload one IP address. And we learn that we can hide internal IP addressing scheme from the outside world with NAT, meaning NAT brings in more security for your company as well by covering the internal addresses of your network from the outside world. So these are all the advantages and configurations and everything about NAT. Uh, I hope this video is helpful to you and uh, thank you for watching.